Hey, sysadmin, what time is it? I'm glad you asked because it's time for me to show you how you can install and configure a secondary domain controller using nothing but PowerShell. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. What is up, guys? Welcome to the sysadmin tutorials YouTube channel. Now, if you remember a few tutorials ago, we had a video on installing and configuring a primary Active Directory domain controller using nothing but PowerShell. Now, in this episode, we're going to be using PowerShell once again to install and configure that secondary Active Directory domain controller. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. Up on screen, we have our member server that we are going to be installing and configuring our secondary Active Directory domain controller on. Now, this is a fresh install of Windows Server 2022. And let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is open up PowerShell ISE. I'm then going to go ahead and click on the View menu and then Show Script Pane. Once the script pane is up, I'm going to make this full screen. And now I'm going to copy across the PowerShell code that I've written to create your secondary Active Directory domain controller. OK, let's break down this script and let's see exactly what it's going to be doing. Now we've got some variables. We've got a little bit of configuration here. We've got some setup and then blah, blah, we get to the end. And guess what? We have our Active Directory domain controller set up. Now, I hope that you've copied that line for line because that script is not going to be available anywhere else. Mm. Wrong. Of course, guys, of course, I'm going to be providing this script for you guys to try out. Now, let's go back up to the top. All right. So in my previous tutorial, which was how to set up an Active Directory primary domain controller using PowerShell, I have gone through this script previously line by line, step by step. So in the interest of time, what I would like you to do is if you're not familiar with PowerShell is go back and watch that video and link is going to be up on screen here right now. So go and click on that, go down to the script section and I'll explain line by line exactly what that script does. In this script, because it's a secondary Active Directory domain controller, I'm just going to go through the changes that I've made. So they're the changes that I've made from the last script. So basically we've taken out all the primary Active Directory domain controller settings and we've tailored this one just for that secondary AD server. Now up the top, it is important here for the variables that we do adjust this for your network. So my network is 192.168.1.0/24 and therefore you can see my IP address there reflecting that subnet along with the default gateway and the DNS server, this is the primary DNS server that's going to be configured on this server. And that DNS server points to the primary Active Directory domain controller. Because when we come to set up our Active Directory domain controller, it's going to try to find a domain controller within the DNS name. And you need to be pointing to that primary DNS to be able to resolve that and join this server to the network. Next important piece of information is getting the domain name right. So this is the domain name of our primary Active Directory domain controller, and that is vlab.local. And secondly, it's also important to get the site name correct, which in my case is sydney-site. We then have some options to enable RDP, disable IE, enhance security, and then importantly is uh, set setting the host name. So on our primary domain controller, you probably guessed it, I have named that server DC1. So it makes sense to call this server server DC2. We then go through, we create a log file, and we get to the first step of configuring our server. Now, in this first step, it's going to be setting the IP address. It's going to be changing the RDP setting to true or false or enabled or disabled. It's then going to be enabling or disabling the IE enhanced security as well, depending on what you put in that variable up the top. We then go through, set the host name. We write some more information to the log, and then we go through and we reboot the server. So before we continue going through the rest of this script, let's run the script. It's just going to run that first bit there because as you guessed it, there is a second bit and a third bit. So it's only going to run that first bit until it reboots the computer. And then we'll have the basic settings all done. We'll be able to RDP into the server. So I'm on the console with this screen here. And then we'll come back into the script. We'll rerun it again. And what it'll do is it'll skip that first section because it knows that it is run by looking into the log file. And it will start on the second section, which we'll go through shortly. And I'm going to save this into C drive temp. I'm going to call this script second AD server. 
and then just click on save. And what we'll do is we'll simply just click on the play button and log file has been created. IP address has been set, enhanced security, RDP, computer names been set. And then we just got a warning up on screen to say, save all your work. Computer is going to reboot in 30 seconds. So after the 30 seconds, computer will reboot and then we'll come back. Server has now been rebooted. So we can check a couple of settings that the script has performed so far. So let's go to local server and we can see that the host name set to server DC2. We can also see remote desktop has been enabled and IE enhanced security has been disabled or turned off. So exactly what the script said it was going to do, it has done. Now let's fire up PowerShell ISE again and let's open up that script. I'm going to scroll down to the second part because we've already gone through this first part now. And just at the top of the script here, you can see that the script checks in the log file to see if the log file contains one basic server config complete. So if it does, it knows that it can just go straight to number two or step number two and proceed from there. It doesn't need to go through and run step number one again. So now for step number two, we're going to be setting a variable for the safe mode admin password. And then it's going to prompt us for some credentials. Now those credentials are going to be used to join this server into the Active Directory domain controller. And then it's going to be used a little bit further down in the script, which I'm going to show you shortly. We're going to install the AD domain services, uh, the Windows feature. And then we're going to write some more information to the log file. And if we keep scrolling down, we're then going to import the module so that we can run install AD DS domain controller. This install ADDS domain controller is our main line that contains all our Active Directory domain controller settings. So let's go through them. We are going to be creating this Active Directory domain controller as a global catalog server, hence that dash no global catalog is set to false. We are not going to be using DNS delegation, so that one's set to false. The credentials for joining this Active Directory domain controller server to our primary AD server, it's going to be using dollar creds. And that's what we input just before. So you'll see when we run this script, there'll be a prompt that comes up on screen asking for those credentials. And then it's going to save those credentials into the variable. It then goes ahead and set the safe mode administrator password and the critical replication only to false. The domain name, if you remember at the top of the script, when we went through the variables, my domain name is vlab.local. So it's going to be setting that there. It's going to go ahead and install a DNS server on this. So definitely you want DNS on your Active Directory domain controller. It's then going to set it that once it's complete to go ahead and reboot the server automatically. So no reboot on completion is false. It's then going to pull the variable dollar site name, which if you remember, my site name is called sydney-site. And then it's going to set some default paths. So paths for database, sysvol and logs. It then writes some more information to the log file, at which point the server should then reboot because it's completed its Active Directory domain controller install. Now let's run the script again, and it's going to go through step number two, which is installing and configuring all that Active Directory domain controller components. So I'm just going to go and press the play button. And first up on screen, it's asking us for our safe mode admin password. So I'm going to type that in here and then go ahead and click on OK. Now, this is the username and password that we're using to join to the Active Directory. So I'm just going to use my administrator username and password here. And once that's done, we'll click OK. Now, we'll just wait for the script to go through and do its thing. And while it's doing that, guys, if you've enjoyed this video so far, uh, it'll really mean a lot to me if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you really like the content and want to stay up to date with what I do, then you can hit the subscribe button as well. It helps YouTube algorithm and really just helps me out with the channel and growing the channel. So I appreciate that if you could do that for me. Otherwise, let's wait and see what happens with this script. OK, it's about to be logged out. So it is going to go through and reset. The script is complete and there's our restart. Now that this server is an Active Directory domain controller, we are going to have to log into it using our Active Directory domain name. So in my case, I'm logging in with administrator at vlab.local and then with the password, I get into the Active Directory domain controller here and away we go. Now I'm going to go back to PowerShell ISE and open up my script and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'll just expand the window a little bit and this bit here. Now this part of the script 
sets up DNS scavenging on the DNS server that we've installed with our Active Directory domain controller. Now, if we rewind the video, I'm just going to show you up on screen. That part actually did run straight after our Active Directory install configuration and setup. So all it did was it set DNS scavenging on the DNS server itself on server DC2. And I'll show you that right now up on screen. Within my DNS server, I right click on it. I go to properties and then I go to advanced and you can see enable automatic scavenging of stale records set to seven days. We can close that. After the scavenging set, it then writes a timestamp into the log file, puts some more logs in there, and then we are done. We have a secondary Active Directory domain controller and all we've used is PowerShell. We didn't have to touch any of the GUI at all. Now, as you can see, using PowerShell saves you an enormous amount of time especially if you're deploying multiple domain controllers. Remember, we just need to change those variables at the beginning of the script, hit play, and then just let it do its thing. And that just saves so much time as opposed to going into the GUI, clicking on next, next, entering commands, next, 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 and so on. Especially if you have to repeat installations. So if you're deploying multiple secondary domain controllers, for example, or you are gonna be definitely deploying primary and secondary domain controllers in the future, then grab these scripts, modify them, do what you want with them, but um, it's definitely gonna save you time later on. Now, as I promised, where can you get this script? Well, you can get that up on my GitHub page, and that link is gonna be in the description below of this video, and I'll also put it up here on screen, and go ahead, check that out. There are a whole heap of other scripts in there. If you guys are interested, grab them, have a play with them, and any questions, just post them in the comments below and I'll do my best at getting back to you as soon as I can. But guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video. And yeah, we hope to see you back again soon. All right, cheers guys, thank you, bye.